Hey everybody, it's uh, episode 10 of the Darkest Before Dawn podcast, and I have an awesome guest with me today. Leo, what's going on, man? Not too much, just uh, just chilling on my deck, having a, a rum and amaretto, and uh, talking to you. That's awesome, what a night, dude. That sounds like a good night right there, man. Yeah, that's alright so far. <laughs> hey man, what was, a, what was a typical day on set of Wolf Cop like? One or two, uh, the, well, tell you the truth, they're both kind of the same, a big blurry mess. Um, <laughs> it, my days uh, typically started with uh, with uh, some time in the chair, getting uh, getting done up on uh, done done up as wolf cop. Yeah. Um, for, you know, through which most I, I, I slept and, and uh, you know. Zephyr played with my face and fucking, you know, did whatever the hell he did. I'm not sure what he was doing. Half the time I was sleeping pretty hard and, he, you know, there could have been some teabagging. I don't know. And, uh, uh, you know, then we'd hit set and I'd hang around uh, uh, watching Lowell, uh, you know, stumble through his day and, and watching uh, the, the goings on. Uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, wait until they. Uh, you know, set dance, and then uh, you know, hit hit set, try hit my marks, try to hit my lines, and uh, you know, the days would just carry on like that. Awesome. Uh, they're, they're good. They're cool. What was like a uh, typical time range you were in the makeup chair for? Well, you know, it, uh, it it evolved quite a bit over the course of the two shows. Uh, I mean, when we first started off. Um, on that that journey, it was uh, you know I was I was spending upwards of four hours in the chair to get uh, to get my face on and and uh, you know all the extra hair, the cowling, um, uh, teeth, all that that kind of stuff, contacts. Um, uh, by the time we finished with uh, with uh, the second movie, um, we were we were ripping that shit off in like an hour, hour fifteen. Uh, and then I, you know, I jump into the gloves and and, uh, and and the cop outfit or whatever, and um, yeah, no. So it evolved quite quite drastically over the course of the two shows. And, um, yeah, it was it was fucking it was painful at the beginning, man. Was it? But uh, by the end of it, man, you know, like I'd sit down in the chair and, and uh, Emerson would uh, put the, put the blow dryer on me so I wouldn't get gassed out too bad by the fumes of the. All the all the glues and and adhesives and all that shit and the, and the alcohol based paints and uh, I'd just doze off and you know he he nudge me awake when it was time to go to sleep. <laughs> oh, nice dude. So what were your what were your thoughts about Wolf Cop in the beginning when you know when they kind of pitched you the idea about it? Um. Well, right from right from the get go uh, before the, the the script was even written. Uh, uh, I was excited, you yeah. know, like, uh, um, uh, Lowell Dean uh, actually pitched me the idea while we were shooting a music video for uh, a local Regina band uh, that he was directing, and uh, I was uh, actually, <laughs> uh, it was, I guess, it was sort of the birth of, uh, of the whole uh, wolf makeup thing. Uh, I was playing a werewolf in his this music video. Oh, no shit. And... Uh, over the course of that that uh, that day, uh, you know, he had me he had me doing everything, hitting on girls, dancing. Uh, you know, by the end of the video, I was ripping everybody's faces off and, and goofing around, and jumping tables, and, you know, acting like a total fucking Leo. And uh, and uh, you know, sort of three quarters of the way through the day, there was a bit of a uh, slow spot where the the techs were, were were doing a bit of lighting and and uh, whatnot and uh, and he's uh, old just kind of casually walked up and said look I've got a cop script that I kind of want to shoot but I've also got this werewolf script I want to shoot and we start talking and and, uh, and and he's like is it too much do you think it'd be too much if I jammed the two together and we just made a werewolf cop movie and I just grinned here and here and I was like dude if you fucking do that there's no way you're not using me in that movie and he just <laughs> smiled and he said I'll get to writing it nice. and uh, you know now when he was pitching you the idea and he was like um 
you know you're gonna you know you were gonna be a while in the makeup chair and everything because you said you previously did it. Did he mention um anything about getting tea bagged when you were um talking to him about that? <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. That's all Emerson. That's all Emerson. Oh. But, uh, you know, Lowell likes this. Just he, he like he's always um, he's always given us our space and, uh, to just you know he, what happens in the makeup trailer. I'm sure Lowell doesn't want to know at all. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, out of both movies, uh, what was your favorite scene that you were in? Like your all-time favorite scene out of both. My all-time favorite scene out of both. Well, to tell you the truth, I mean that it, it, it's um, it's my favorite because of the way it plays uh, in the movie. Yeah. But also, we just had we had a stupid amount of fun shooting the buck and the initial, like the very first transformation in the bathroom scene where my dick explodes. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to say that because it's a bit of a spoiler or whatever. Maybe some of you are up yeah. But I mean, we we well, for lack of be- a better a better a better terminology or whatever, we milk that scene to the very very fullest of our abilities. Uh, we we spent hours in that bathroom. We we blew that dick up. <laughs> Take place from Sunday, man. And, um, I mean, the, the whole scene amongst the crew and everything, the whole thing, it's instantly, it was, it was like an iconic sort of, um, um, you know, uh, cornerstone scene for, it set the pace for everything. We, and we did shoot it fairly early in the movie. And, and like, when we were done it, the key grip actually took one of the, one of, one of the, prosthetics one of the exploded dicks and he pinned it to his grip cart and it lived there for the whole show it was awesome it was awesome <laughs> just the whole crew was behind it we were just like let's see what let, let's just fucking try let's try this let's try this <laughs> hey can you can, do, can you give me more of this can you get closer to that car it was awesome it was just fun <laughs> that's fucking awesome you guys sound like you had like a lot of fun on set of these movies oh yeah no no it's um it was uh, it was a lot of fun uh, just because of the content, uh, um, the characters uh, that we were portraying, and, and the actors who were who were portraying them, and, and uh, the way they got behind them and everything. That made it a lot of fun. But and the other side of that was, uh, or another aspect of that was that um, the film industry in, in in our province had was already had already suffered its decline and, and had uh, had had uh, you know become a, a barren wasteland uh, a few years before we shot the movies and, and um, it was an opportunity to pull a bunch of homegrown uh, uh, family technicians the family of technicians who had all dispersed at uh, after the demise of our industry uh, pull them back into the fold bring them back home to Saskatchewan and uh, you know it was sort of a uh, putting the getting the back and back together kind of an idea right. and there was that family feeling and so uh you know guy you know people that i'd worked with and and um for for better you know over a decade as a technician that had dispersed through calgary toronto vancouver uh to, you know to, to carry on their craft and, and they all came home and it was just like oh my god i can't believe i'm working with uh, you know Dan Crozier yeah. and uh, Pete LaRock, um, you know uh, all these all these great people. Amy, Amy Matteo, uh, Hugh Patterson, all you know all the people involved. Uh, we all got back together and we we just uh, we knew it was going to be a ball before we even fucking you know turn the camera on. Right, yeah. and it was. Yeah, good fucking times, dude, for sure. Hey man, like um, absolutely serious question though. Um, who would win in a bear chug contest, you or the wolf cop? Me or the wolf cop? Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know if you've seen, um, if you've, if you've, uh, if you've, if you've uh, really paid attention watching uh, part two. Uh, it's, it's not a, it's not really a fair contest. When I, when I chug a beer, I try to get all of it in my mouth. Yeah. Whereas if you've seen uh, the, the second uh, installment of Wolf Cop, uh, he really doesn't give a fuck what happens to the beer or the cat or, or whatever when he starts uh when he starts tossing back beer, it's it's just full on. It's it, he'd inject it if he could. 
just to get it in there fast. <laughs> sure would. He's a fucking animal. He's a fucking animal, man. <laughs> so, hey, man, um, how does it feel to be part of the horror community now? Well, you know, um, I've actually, I've, I've really enjoyed my little, um, my little trollop through, through the, the, the non-scape of horror. Uh, you know, um, I've, I've never been a big horror fan. I, I don't watch horror movies really? uh, at all unless, you know, the, the, the wife is actually, um, uh, drags me into to horror movies more than, more than, uh, I, I'm prone to do it myself. Uh, mm-hmm. I, it's just never been a genre I spent much time in, uh, either as a, a, a viewer or as a filmmaker. And, um, I've, but to tell you the truth, I've, I've really, really enjoyed the people. I've enjoyed the fans. Uh, you know, the conventions are, are great. Um, the feedback's great. Uh, and, and, uh, it's just a lot of fun. I've, I've, I've really enjoyed it. I've, I love it. And then, like, you know, occasionally, too, you have, like, that, like, one pain in the ass person that messages you for an interview for their podcast. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you know what, man? I could just not answer the phone. <laughs> that's always <laughs> a fucking, like, that's always a thing. You just not answer the phone or just, like, like yeah, man, I, I didn't get to my message. I'd never seen it, you know? That's, you can always do that, yeah. too. <laughs> no, no, it's good, it's good, it's good. Hey, um, no, I'm, I, I'm glad I'm talking to some asshole halfway across the continent. It's good. <laughs> it's what it's about, right? That is what it's about, man. It's definitely about staying up late and talking to some asshole, like, unlike the other side, man. That's what it's about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, man, did you, um, did you ever find out if, uh, Liquid Donuts had the official license to sell your, uh, merchandise? You know, <laughs> that's highly late, man. <laughs> hiding away in his convenience store uh you know uh it's, it's like uh i looked into it and uh you know it's like a, uh, it's just a, a trail of shell companies and uh you know uh, false uh false business numbers and and uh bogus marketing I, I could never put my hand on it. I could never put my thumb on it I, i'm sure he owes me millions he definitely but, uh, owes you uh, money <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know that. <laughs> I think, it's I not think... about the money, guys. You know, let 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 him enjoy his merchandise. I mean, where else am I gonna go for gitch at two in the morning? The, hey, man, that's true, man. I mean, like, I wish there was a liquor donuts in me. Yeah, at least he at least he only charges me wholesale. Yeah, that's good, man. Like, you get discounts and shit, so that's cool. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man. Um, to wrap up. Um, to wrap everything up. Um. Are we going to get a Wolf Cop three? And um, this year, are you going to be doing any horror conventions? Uh, well, I've um, uh, I, I did uh, I did the local uh, media convention here, which which covers a bit of horror, or whatever. Yep. Um, uh, we th- we haven't really um, we haven't really got uh, any budget or or any any designs on 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 doing uh, any horror convention at this point right now right now we're what, what we're actually focusing on is is putting out our next horror which is a non-wolf cop it's actually a zombie love story um, oh, nice. that we're hoping to do uh here in uh late summer early fall kind of a thing mm-hmm. and um so as far as the uh, as far as the wolf cop three you know uh i'd love to do another wolf cop just because it's so much fun and uh you know i uh i, I love um i love the response that we get from the fans and, and putting it out there and just seeing how people react and, and sitting in a, a, a theater uh watching people's faces as uh, you know as as the fully unfolds right. um but um as far as uh, as far as the wolf cop 3 goes uh, I, I, I i don't see anything in the immediate future me, Lowell Emerson, we've all talked about it. Uh, we've all got designs and aspirations that we do it again. But uh, you know, the uh, the stars would have to align, right? Really, really, for us to 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 make steps towards actually putting out a three. Um, we love the franchise. We'd love to do it, but um, uh, we just uh, 
you know, we want to move on to other things as yeah. much as, as much fun as Wolf Cop's been. Uh, you know, if the, if the budget was, to, if someone was to present us with the opportunity and the budget was right and, and, uh, and like I said, the stars aligned, I know we'd all jump back in the saddle and ride that fucking horse right to the end. Oh, hell. Uh, just because it was so much fun. And, you know, the fans love it. And why the if, if, if it's not for the fans, why the hell, what the hell are we doing? Exactly, right? That's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Leo, thank you so much for taking the time tonight to do this interview with me, man. No, you're absolutely, uh, you're absolutely, um, well, I'm not sure what you're absolutely, actually. <laughs> no, you're totally welcome, man. Fuck it. Thank you. Anytime, you know, you got, uh, you want to, you want, you need a little sliver or something or whatever, and you, or you just want to shoot the shit some more. You know, get a hold of me. You know where I am. Fuck, man. Sounds so good, dude. All right. Hey, thank you so much, brother. Right. You're welcome. Good yeah. night. Night later.